This next news is actually pretty interesting for me because it made me do a bit of a deep dive into the whole world of celebrity liquors and whiskeys and tequilas and to kind of get an understanding of what that business is about because clearly that, you know, area of business is very lucrative because if you believe what you read online um diddy sean diddy combs one of the main reasons why he became a billionaire officially was because of his tie-ins with you know Ciroc and what he was doing there with that drink sponsorship and even someone like a rick ross as well his money has gone really crazy since he's done and done the whole belvedere thing so clearly the liquor business is very very lucrative and even for people like diddy and rick ross who've had you know decades and decades of fucking wealth and success when they do eventually launch a liquor it does go goo goo gaga which is why i'm surp actually surprised thinking about it why someone like a rogan hasn't decided to dibble his toes into it maybe it makes sense for him because lifestyle wise he doesn't really talk about drinking liquor as much as everybody else you might have the odd glass of whiskey here and there when you're doing a fight companion or you might talk about drinking something when you went to eat a steak but it's not really part of his brand you don't really see him on his instagram posting you know whiskeys that he's tasting and wine you know whatever he's not really that into it as much as you probably would hope but you would imagine how dummy hard a joe rogan whiskey would go Oof. anyway all this to say this story courtesy holly reporter is interesting it says spirits giant diageo aims to cut ties with diddy after the mogul claims racial discrimination so it's been a pretty interesting turn of events so the story goes as this spirits giant diageo said it was severing partnership of 15 years i forgot how long he was been linked up with um diageo and Ciroc. 15 years with diddy come to help grow the company's then struggling Ciroc label as a brand ambassador and joint venture partner the move was in response to the music mogul suing the british alcoholic beverage maker in june for racial discrimination <laughs> imagine diddy's diddy's insane this reminds me of that guy in berlin that was crying that he couldn't get into a club and he started basically saying that they were basically being racist and it's like bruh racist and racist and homophobic it's like bro if there's one place that you can assure you where most clubs are not going to be racist and homophobic it's probably going to be fucking berlin but you know everyone's got their personal experience you can't begrudge it it continues here claiming that the has starved his vodka and tequila brands of promised investment and only marketed them to urban customers consumers sorry the made the announcement on tuesday in a court filing seeking to dismiss the case or move it into arbitration in a statement combs lawyer john houston said the attempting to end this deal with combs is like firing a whistleblower who calls out racism <laughs> Diddy is like an activist now, right? Speaking up for the common man. Um, over the years, he has repeatedly raised concerns as senior executives uttered racial insensitive comments and made biased decisions based on the point of view. The IJ even acknowledged the problem by agreeing to by agreeing his contract to treat De Leon the same way it treated other tequila brands. De Leon first approached Combs in 2007. Sorry, the IJ first approached Combs in 2007 to handle marketing and promotion for Ciroc, an equal share joint venture. He said in a suit that he sparked spectacular growth for the Ciroc and De Leon labels, despite company refusing to uh, devote proper resources, arguing that they were typecasted as black brands that have been targeted only to urban consumers i think that was pretty genius to be honest whoever decided to reach out to diddy at that time in 2007 and basically bring him on board as a really high up level influencer it kind of worked for everybody because for diddy it got him a chance to introduce some new flavors in the market because i think the the deal or how they how the rumor goes is that the regular bottle of ciroc the blue one was struggling they get diddy on board to promote it then he obviously pushes it and it becomes super big. He then wants to cut to the sales or the profits, whatever they do, the, the split, how they do it. They say, nah, not on this original one. Help us develop new original flavors and then we'll cut you in on, on the sales or profits of that one. Hence why he started doing all the mangoes and pineapples and blackberries, all that stuff, right? Because those are things that he kind of, you know, helped to, um, help to build those flavors up from the ground up. But then over time, I'm guessing he wanted more and more of the pie and they didn't want to pay him more and more of it because, you know, they basically want to keep the money for themselves. It makes complete sense on both sides why they're arguing, to be fair. It continues. The agile, um, 
Diageo allegedly didn't comply with his obligations in the agreement by producing lower quantities, distributing in fewer outlets and limiting its marketing and promotion of Delion as compared to other brands according to the complaint. In 2014, Diageo acquired competing tequila brand Don Julio and committed to spending $400 million to grow the business. The company then spent $1 billion three years later to acquire Casamigos. Yo, that's a roster, isn't it? They got Don Julio and Casamigo. Following the acquisition of these comp of these competing brands, Diageo effectively abandoned De Leon. Okay, cool. So he's arguing that because Diageo purchased Don Julio and Casamigos, they essentially dismissed or you know by by default they made it very clear that they were going to betting the horse or putting all their monies into those brands. So to be fair to, to, be fair to Diageo. That makes sense though, because these two brands are way more commercial, way more normy general public than his, right? Or than Ciroc would be, maybe. Maybe it makes sense that they would push that because these are going to be, you know, pushed out to the general public. Um, anyway, the quote here, following its acquisition, the complaint, Deirdre effectively abandoned Elion. Deirdre instead focused its market positioning efforts on brands like Casamigo, with founder George Clooney, Randy Gerber, and Mike Mandelman, Aviation Gin, which owner Ryan Reynolds, and he's got a gin called Aviation. That's a horrendous name. Um, and then Cattle One with Nollet Family as its preferred choices. Deirdre moving to this Mr. Suit, stressed that his contract um, with Combs doesn't require equal treatment of the brands but rather measured proportionate treatment and support of the Delion brands while taking into account a variety of differences among the brands according to the court filings. The company said the statement on Tuesday that Combs was repeatedly under undermined their partnership and threatened to publicly defame Diageo if they did not meet his unfair <laughs> reasonable financial demands. We tried for years to salvage the broken relationship with Mr. Combs, says the company. We funded the purchase of Delion for the joint venture and proceeded to invest more than $100 million to grow the brand. Despite having made nearly a million dollars, sorry, despite having made nearly a billion dollars over the course of the last 15 years of relationship, Mr. Combs contributed a total of 1000 only and refused to honor his commitments. So they're basically saying he did it over to his heart to deal. I can't, that must be the most someone's ever made from like an influencer marketing campaign thing, right? 15 years, over a billion. Who's who's probably done more than that? Do, do, do you think the collections have probably done more than that? I'm not really too sure. That's an insane amount of money to make over 15 years. You don't actually own the brand. You're essentially like a, you know, an overinflated, um, you know, essentially influencer and that's what you get. That shows you the amount of money that's involved in liquors. And also it shows you why this desperation suit that did his fight I can understand why because he wants to settle out of court and you're still going to end up with a few million so it makes complete sense so for me when it comes to the story what really sticks out is there's clearly I think on Diddy's side an inability to kind of work with these people with these kind of I don't know what would you call them these corporations in a somewhat um, amicable way because I feel like they could have rescued this solution. This didn't need to go this far. And I feel like the racial discrimination thing is bullshit because you're in a relationship with these guys for 15 years. It's only now you say something about racial discrimination around the same time that you haven't beef with them because they didn't push your tequila brand. I just think this is a clearly one of those misunderstandings in business that happen all the time. They could have dealt with this easily behind closed doors and made it work. But instead, as soon as you brought it into the public and you just besmirched their name, it doesn't surprise me that the AGO will go out of their way to make sure that they cut ties of him so it doesn't represent them anymore. That makes complete sense to me. I'm not really too shocked about that. But I just think in all, this also goes to prove that a lot of these guys, I don't know what it is, but they get way too much. What's it? No, it's like it kind of feels like entitlement, because for for what we've been reading so far, the Adjo is one that puts most of their capital and takes most of the risk for launching products. They're the ones that are testing it, manufacturing it, producing whatever they're doing. Right? They're investing a lot to get those things made and pushed out there. And more than likely, they've already got an infrastructure. They've got a business that already works. You can kind of plug and play. So if that's the case, you kind of have to treat the relationship a bit differently than if it was just a straight up, you know, influence on influencer type of thing. Clearly one person is the manufacturer type of deal and then, you know, you split it accordingly. But I think the idea that they own it too is a bit wild. Do you know what I mean? Like it's definitely, 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 definitely a bit wild. It definitely comes off of being titled. 
But it's also funny for me from Diddy's side of things because he's always been accused of somebody that does bad business. He's always had this kind of smart against his name, especially if you listen to someone like a Mace or some other folks out there. You've had some very bad dealings with him in the record industry. You'd think if, if you're that guy and you're known to be a bit of a scammer, you're known to be a bit of a grifter, you're known to be a bit of a, you know, allegedly be a bit of a charlatan or whatever it may be, you have to be okay with sometimes it coming back and biting in your ass. If you sometimes scam people allegedly and you sometimes get away with it, you have to also be, you know, not be happy with it, but be respectful and be like, you know what? Thanks, universe, for that reminder. Cheers. Thanks for that little reminder because it could have been far worse than this, you know what I mean? So the fact that it's only ending the way it's ending now, this is is what it is. But again, like I said, it always it also goes to prove how much money is really involved in this liquor industry because clearly it's a lot to a point where Diddy is essentially, I feel like, lying or exaggerating what exactly happened behind closed doors at Diageo, claiming it's racism in order for him to kind of win some money and shit. But again, you know, he could have, uh, he could have, uh, he could have avoided all this if he would have done what most people should do in these kind of situations. You get hired by Diageo to basically spearhead the relaunch of Ciroc or to basically revive it. You do your job diligently. Over 15 years, you make a billion dollars. You should be taking that money and making your own fucking Casamigos. You don't need them to develop it for you. And the fact that he did do it shows that there's a reliance too much on these guys to just go into places and do plug and play deals or plug, you know, insert themselves in deals without doing much to kind of get involved in them and then hoping for the maximum amount of return. I don't think that's fair on the person you're, work, you're working with partnership wise. It doesn't really make much sense to me in that regard. So maybe this is a lesson learned in that regard in terms of like betting on yourself ridiculously well and investing your money on yourself in that way. But I really am eager to see how this plays out because it feels like Diddy's trying to get himself a nice little payday off of the back of this. Um, and it'll be nice actually if he does end up, you know, even if it does end up not going anywhere and he gets thrown out, I would actually like to see him actually launch his own thing from the ground up invest his own money and go that way and see what happens there because if the guy was able to generate 15 nearly a billion in 15 years just representing Ciroc making it really desirable to the point where I purchased it a few times only on the shelf of him I'd love to see what he could do with his own brand from the ground up I'll be curious to see from that but again let's see if that works out let's see if that one works 